pushed out the news a little bit this week to see if I can collect a little bit more for this week's news roundup, but it seems most news stories are waiting until Gen Con shows up at the start of August. But I still have got some stories as well as some big announcements for you, so let's get to it for the week of July 10th, 2023. First, we're going to talk about Exploding Kittens and a new line of games they have in store. CEO Ellen Lee noticed that when playing with her four-year-old, that most of the time they got distracted with games and didn't seem like there was a game that was very well designed with the preschool audience in mind. So with that, they are designing a new line of games under the Kitten Games line. These will be designed, like I said, with a younger audience, though based on the description, it sort of sounds like they're trying to make it so parents will enjoy the time playing the game with the kids as well. But of course, that remains to be seen. Now, all these games will actually be coming out at Target at the end of July, around July 30th. And here are a few games that are expected to be seen in the kitten game lineup. First, we have I Want My Teeth Back, which apparently people be gathering teeth and trying to get a full mouth's worth of teeth. This sounds like a nightmare to me, but I guess it tested well with kids. Then we've got Hurry Up Chicken Butt, which I think is going to be a game that most people are excited about just saying the title of, but it seems to be based off their hot potato game. Then we've got The Best Worst Ice Cream, which is basically making really weird ice cream flavors. And finally, My Parents Might Be Martians, which seems to be a younger version of their previous game, Poetry for Neanderthals. So if you have a kid that falls under that preschool age group, you might want to try and check out Target to pick up on these games. And like I said, maybe this might be one you'll actually enjoy playing with them instead of just being a box of random components that your kid's going to play with and not really care about what the rule book has to say. Next one isn't technically game related, but like I said, collecting stories, as well as something I feel a lot of people should know about, whether you are a board gamer or not, because this is going to be something that impacts shipping So make sure you place your orders in now. You see, UPS is currently in negotiations with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, and that union and UPS seem to not be coming to an agreement. The contract that they are currently discussing is expiring August 1st, and the union has stated that should no agreement be made, they will be going on strike then. This is important, obviously, because most board gamers ship their board games, as well as that happening right around Gen Con meaning that if you're planning to ship games back or if you're having things shipped to Gen Con, then you might want to make sure you have either everything already set up and ready to go or you're using a different delivery service. UPS is not small. I believe the number of packages just in the U.S. alone that they take care of is around 25%. So that's already a big deal. I don't know how much they take care of internationally, but it's still going to be a huge problem when it comes to the shipping infrastructure. Now, there is some time and maybe an agreement will be made before that deadline. But regardless, if you are planning on buying anything or shipping anything because of conventions and whatnot, do make sure that you have everything planned out just in case come August 1st, UPS is forced to halt their shipping. Flesh and Blood is having its second world championship, this time in Barcelona, Spain. This new card game has been very well received, especially among the more competitive players I've seen. And this will still have a $1 million prize for the winner of the championship. It's going to be held from the 16th to the 19th. So if you are disappointed you weren't able to find the $1 million ring card, maybe it's now time to hop over to Flesh and Blood and see if you can win the $1 million prize. Now, a small update on the Cthulhu Wars, Palette Wars issues I talked about a little while back. It's nothing too much and really only concerns those who are already involved in the situation. Granted, you may have already read the update, but I felt like it was worth just putting it here just to make sure you hear about it. Now, they did bring up the fact that, yes, they were involved in the data leak and they have the exact number of 412 people and they have said they have contacted those people to let them know so if you haven't received an email yet that means your information was not one of the 400 that was leaked out in addition there seems to be also a small mix-up of what palette you may actually be on but they're going to go over it again make sure and if you did make any donations it's going to make sure to attribute to the palette you're actually on so nothing too bad unless you were thinking you're on a palette that was almost funded and then got pushed to one that isn't. So nothing too crazy there. The big thing though I want to mention is make sure you to constantly check your spam and junk emails. They have said it in the updates multiple times before. 
my information of what Palo Amazon was actually in my spam folder. So make sure you check there just in case if you want to find out if you're one of the people whose data was leaked or if there's any update when it comes to your Cthulhu Wars pledge. Yes, I know, really stretched out news stories there on some not very big news stories, but we do have some cool game announcements at the very least. First, we have Mordred from Simon. This will be coming later on to Kickstarter. The idea here is you'll be playing as different factions in the Arthurian Legends lore, where apparently King Arthur has disappeared because of a spell cast, and you'll be vying for the power and respect of the three main factions, Morgana, Mordred, and Merlin. Each of them has their own sort of goals and ideas in mind. Merlin wants to restore the old kingdom. Mordred just wants to fight King Arthur and prove his worth as the true king. And Morgana, I'm sure, just wants her power control all for herself. You'll be vying for power among each of these factions, as well as recruiting knights from the round table. Of course, there'll be monsters you'll have to deal with, and it seems the board will transform at some point. So it looks like it has a lot of cool stuff going on, as well as not a simple, I have most power win. Rather, you could have the most power amongst all the players, but if you weren't backing the faction that won, it basically means nothing. So you can expect to see this later on, of course, like I said, on Kickstarter, and we'll see if they have any other more goodies as we approach the campaign release date. Gloomhaven's big festival backer kit is still going on, and they have a new announcement for something you can add to your pledge. Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs is a mini solo player version of Gloomhaven in which the events take place after original Gloomhaven, and you have been shrunken down to the size of a mouse or bug, and you need to fight your way through 20 mini scenarios and try to return to normal size. This is a solo experience and in a much smaller box, uh, I don't know if we can call it travel size per se, maybe travel size in comparison to any other large campaign game, but a small experience nonetheless. It is going to be something that's fun, especially for the solo players out there who, at least in my experience, Gloomhaven, you can technically play solo, but it's really controlling multiple characters. This is designed with just the solo experience in mind. Another game from Exploding Kittens, but not part of the Kitten Games line, is Without Fail. This game is a dexterity game in which people will take on difficult tasks, and the other players will take bets on whether they can succeed. Whoever bets the highest becomes their teammate, and whichever team pairing scores the most becomes the winner. So this is a very interesting style. It reminds me a bit of Medium, where technically you could be part of multiple teams, and one of your teams wins. You just need to be on the winning team. So we'll see how that works and what kind of weird, crazy challenges they have in store for you. Then, Zombicide, I talked about how Monty Python was joining them last week. Now, Supernatural is going to get an expansion as well. Granted, Supernatural seems to be a much better fit than Monty Python in terms of zombies, monsters, and whatnot. And I'm sure the fandom is more than happy to see them join the game. I don't know. Let me know if there is a Supernatural game because I can't actually think of one right now off the top of my head. But regardless, it looks like we're starting to get Zombicide being where all the IPs are going to end up. So maybe we're going to get Smash Brothers Zombicide in the future. Fantasy Flight is continuing its new repackaging of LCGs, and we're returning to Lord of the Rings for this one. Lord of the Rings The Two Towers is a repackaging of the Treason of Saruman as well as the Land of Shadow. So if you are missing those or just want the big box to hold your collection, you can pick that up. Everdell has a new standalone Far Shore. You've probably seen a lot of videos about it. I actually have a copy, but due to a misunderstanding on my part, I thought that the embargo of release was much later. So I will hopefully have a review for that game later on this month. Finally, this isn't a game, but something I think could be very interesting. Czech Games is releasing a new documentary series in which they go over just their own creation, and each episode would actually focus on some of the games during that time that they created. The first episode is going to drop this month in July, with eight episodes totaling, ending, I believe, with the final one airing in November. So you can go check that out if you want to learn more about how board games are made and companies are created. That is all we have this week. I know not a lot going on right now, but I'm sure a lot of people are excited for Gen Con. Not only can you let me know if you're going to Gen Con and what you're excited about, I will be releasing my Gen Con preview video very shortly, hopefully this week. So you can check that out to see what games you should be hunting down, as well as, of course, just maybe see what's going on this year at Gen Con. 
I'd love to hear your comments on anything, whether it's these stories, Gen Con, or something else entirely. But for now, I'm Will, and this has been Roll for Crit News Roundup.